This is my 2019 Infiniti Q50, and this is my AU Car Mark VI radio. Today, we're going to discuss the quirks and features. Stay tuned. All right, so pardon my attempt at humor this morning. Um, that was my Doug DeMiro uh, intro. Figured to try something different. Uh, works for him. Um, so we have been using the AU Car Mark VI radio for approximately a month now. Um, overall, the feeling is pretty good. You know, stuff works pretty good. Um, but there are some quirks and features. It is Android based. It is from China. Um, it is an overlay to the in-touch system. So there are a lot of things that get missed um, on some other reviews, just things that aren't mentioned. Um, you guys have reached out to me a lot in the comments on my other video. I'm actually surprised um, how much traction the other video is getting. So I figured I'd do a follow-up video, show you guys some things I've learned over the last month with this unit. So, if you guys watched the install video of the unit, you notice that um, the top screen stays in place and this covers up the top screen. The reason for that is because that top screen is your DCU. That DCU is still responsible for many other things. I do not know exactly what all it is responsible for, but um, there is a lot of other stuff that goes on in the background. I know for a fact it controls the cameras. Um, I think something with the HVAC system, um, probably the navigate again, it is like the main control unit. So this is an overlay to that unit. If you are having problems with that DCU, you putting this unit in place is not going to fix those problems. So the guys that are having issues with your screens blacking out and just your screens not coming on at all, your HVAC doesn't work, your radio doesn't work, this is not going to fix your problems because if your DCU does not work, this is an overlay to that or this is a piggyback to that. Um, if your screens are a little buggy and maybe the, the physical screen is blown out, but all the functions still work, your backup cameras, your radio, HVAC, things like that, this might work. I'm not going to say it's going to, but this might work because you may just have a physical screen problem, but the, the controller inside the screen um, may still be functioning properly. Um, that is a gamble you got to take. You can't just swamp out that DCU. That DCU is specific to the options of your car. Again, you saw my DCU had four cameras, um, four camera inputs because I have 360 view cameras. There are some other things. Again, if you have navigation, things like this, um, if you get another DCU, you might have to get it reprogrammed by the, the, by infinity. These are things I don't know, but I want to give you a heads up on that because I've gotten a lot of questions on, yo bro will this work if my screens don't work and the answer is possibly but probably not it, it kind of depends on the depth of your issues i am going to speak now on au car support a little bit um i've tried emailing out to them to no response um, if you go on their website you can use their email contact form and they'll eventually answer you um, but i will say guys if you are going to buy these I suggest buying them from Rob at uh, Square Wheels Auto, I think his channel is. Buy it from Rob, because when you're buying it from Rob, you're gonna get direct support. Um, he has enough experience with these, and he's used these enough, and he kind of has a, I'm not gonna say a backdoor, but he has an easier way to contact a U-Car. In speaking with him, he um, advised me that AU car will typically respond better to WhatsApp messages. I'm not downloading WhatsApp. I'm not doing this shit where they're messaging me at three o'clock in the morning because, um, you know, time difference is 12 hours or something like that. So, um, again, for support, solely for support, if not for anything else, buy it from Rob. 
you're going to get direct support. He is very good with answering questions. He's available on social media. You know, he sells the things and he has a website kind of dedicated to these things and these projects he does on Q50s. So, um, again, shout out to Rob for um, the videos that you already have to get me started on where I got. Now, again, I'm just going to kind of touch on some of the stuff that I find is interesting that, that answers a lot of other questions. Um, so check out Rob. I'll throw a link to his channel and his website below, and uh, you guys can buy directly from him. So here's the default screen um, that you are um, blessed with, I guess is the term I'm going to use when this boots up. My wife's phone syncs to this via wireless CarPlay. I have not synced my phone to this via wireless CarPlay because I'm scared to mess with it. Um, if you guys saw from the previous video, it is a little slow to pick up. Um, it's a little slow to add a new device. I don't want to mess with it and cause problems for my wife. So I figured I'd let hers, when her phone's in the car, wireless CarPlay kind of comes up like that. You know, within 10 seconds or so, her phone links. You get some Gennaro CarPlay screen. You'll kind of get this, this screen and it will do its thing. It'll sit at this for like 15, 30 seconds before it connects. I don't want to mess with that. Um, Again, just because I don't want to cause problems for her, which in turn is going to cause problems for me. You can also do wired CarPlay. I have not done that yet. So here is one of the things that I found out. This um, USB hub that comes from the factory, this is now essentially useless. You can only use this for charging, and this does not interface with this unit anymore like it did with a factory unit. Um, my plan was to just be able to plug in my phone and use wired CarPlay. I'll let her use wireless CarPlay. That's not the deal now. So now i got to rip all this back out and plug in <clears throat> that other harness um, so I can use my phone with the unit via plugged in. Or, you know, I have 30, 40 gigs of music on my phone, so I want to be able to use... Um, I want to be able to use the onboard music if I can, or maybe I'll just dump music to it. But again, I'm probably going to have to have the USB connected to be able to put music from a USB drive onto this, because, again, that's not going to work. Um, otherwise, what I have been doing... Oh, here's another good thing. If you need the radio, you have to go into InTouch. So when I'm driving it, before I figured I was going to um, link my phone via wireless hotspot, I was like, how the hell do I listen to the radio? Okay, so you got to go back in to InTouch. And um, you know what? Actually, now I'm curious if my iPod is going to come up, iPod, my phone is going to come up as an iPod on this if I connect it through there. But if you see in here, this is the only option I've seen to be able to use um, FM and Sirius XM. I haven't seen any apps, you know, natively on the AU car unit. All right, so some other nuances that I found with this thing is with the HVAC. So we're gonna scroll up, go to HVAC. Right now you're gonna see my seat heaters on auto. I don't know why that changed. This thing kind of has a mind of its own, but I'm gonna show you something interesting I found with this. If you shut off, Okay, so if you shut off the HVAC, it shuts off your seat heaters. You can't do anything with your heat seat heaters until you turn the air back on. Now you're gonna see, now my seat heaters go back on. Um, as you can see, you can't get to your steering wheel control uh, to, for your heated steering wheel. You have to go back into InTouch. And you go into Climate and you have your steering wheel controller there. So my wife has told me some days her steering wheel heater will go on by itself. I don't know how that's happening, but um, sometimes it goes on by itself. She's cool with. Sometimes the heated seats come on by themselves, which is cool, but um, it doesn't always happen. So again, if you're having problems with your seats not heating up, it might be because you don't have your heat on. And you may say, why would you want your heated seats on and not your heat on? I don't know. I like Personally, I like my heated seats on, like if it's below, you know, 50 degrees, so I keep them on a lot. Um, another weird thing I found, let me see if I can figure out how to do it again. Okay, so here's what it was. I had it in dual mode, so you'll click on dual mode, thinking it, it will, you know, 
adjust both the temperatures at the same time but you're gonna see my defrosters on so watch this turn off the defroster and now you're gonna see it adjust both at the same time turn on dual mode and it shuts it off but turn the defroster back on and again it puts it back in dual mode so you cannot adjust that or put it back into the uh the, the sink mode with the defroster on that drove me nuts trying to figure that out for a little bit all the buttons that come with this unit kind of go through this mode where the lights change colors and go through a sequence if you want to change that um, if you go into your app menu here you're going to see the ambient light set click on that and this is where you can adjust the theme of your lights so you can make it not change colors you can set it to a certain color customized colors um, i personally like it white to be able to match you know what the factory is uh, but my wife is cool with the change of colors so she asked that i change it back to changing colors um, but if you want to change that that is how you change that if you want to change anything with with your sound processing aka your dsp click down on your apps go into settings i think it was and here's where you're going to have you know your main au core settings go into audio and you go into equalizer in this equalizer now you have a number of settings um why this is flipping back on its own i don't understand this is a new thing that it doesn't let you stay in the screen for too long this i have not experienced yet but um, you have a number of settings you can change in your equalizer mode i have not messed with this too much yet i think i think i set this before for popular mode and it made it pretty punchy it sounded pretty good but it was distorting the speakers up on the dash and making some weird noise so i set it back to normal mode until i actually get some time to listen to some music and tune it the way that i like now that i'm out here i'm probably going to do this one thing i want to tell you guys though if you use an iphone and you set your iphone for any let me see if i can bring it up on mine real quick if on your iphone you happen to set the eq so you're gonna see mine set for deep because when i listen to my headphones i like a little bit deeper bass if you set that to deep that is going to mess with the audio quality uh, when your phone is synced up to this device so if you're using wireless carplay wired carplay and you have this set for something bassy and you also have the eq set for something bassy on here it's going to sound like dog shit so you got to either decide what you want to do you want the radio to be in control of the audio or you want your phone to be in control of your audio problem is is i enjoy a fuller bass when i'm listening to my earbuds um, or my cans when i'm working so um i kind of leave that you know as it is on the phone and adjust the radio so if you bypass you can bypass this by doing a, a wi-fi hotspot on your phone and then you use the tablet and i'm going to call this a tablet because it is if you use the tablet natively then this will take over as the owner for the sound processing and not your phone so the reason why i call this a tablet because in all actuality it is it's a pixel xl3 essentially um i was doing something i think i was looking up mac address tables on my network for what was hitting my wi-fi or something i saw pixel xl3 so essentially this must be a pixel xl3 with an overlay on it and then you know obviously adding the borders and all the other stuff that au card does another thing that somebody asked me is and this is actually funny this is going to boot up and in, in touch all the time now i don't understand why um another thing somebody asked me is when you run the navigation either natively on this unit by going into you know google maps on here or um uh carplay from your phone will the navigation come up on this screen in the middle anymore and the answer is no kind of actually the main answer is no for those apps the answer is no so if you go into the screen up here you're going to see that this is an aux mode um this 
does not interface with that. So I don't know why you would want to rely on getting your navigation on this little screen if you have this monstrosity of a screen. Um, however, if you wanted to do that, you really could. So what you would do is you would go back to InTouch and you would click on your navigation from here. You can navigate from here, but the problem is nothing comes up on this screen. So you're not going to get in touch onboard navigation from the screen, at least from what I saw, but you will get your turn by turn stuff up here. I think it's counterintuitive to spend a thousand to twelve hundred dollars on this big thing to then look at navigation on there when you can simply, um, you know, have this this monster navigation unit right here. And I will say navigating through this thing is phenomenal. It's just great having this big screen. Um, so if you are if you have some setbacks with that, I would say don't let that hold you back because you're getting the benefits of the bigger screen. All right, so we're gonna to touch on the cameras. Um, again, you guys are gonna see, I do have my 360 view cameras. Does it look great? No, it doesn't look fabulous, but guess what? It didn't look fabulous on the OEM unit either, right? So if you have these cameras, you know the cameras have always been a, a low resolution camera. Um, and it's just always looked terrible on the top screen anyway. So I will say it looks just as terrible. I won't say it looks any worse because the resolution, or at least the size of the image is the same. It's still in this upper quadrant. It's not like it blew it up across the screen. So it is the same-ish to me. You can still go ahead and modify your, your cameras, how you wanted the view. Um, I'm not gonna mess with that. But again, the sonar, everything works the way it's supposed to work with the cameras. Okay, so anybody that had questions about the drive modes, does the drive mode thing come up on the screen? The answer is no. When you modify the drive modes, it is only going to come up on this middle screen. Nothing happens through here. Um, again, because this is an overlay, there's only so much stuff that's gonna get cooked in. If you go into InTouch, now that I think about it, I wonder, Okay, so I'm modifying the drive modes here and you don't you don't see any of this happening on the screen. So that does not happen in the InTouch app either. All right, so now we're gonna touch on the hotspot or the tethering. Um, I personally did not install the LTE um, dongle or adapter or card tray um, because I don't plan on ever adding a SIM to this. To me, it's not worth spending another 15 bucks a month through my cellular carrier to um, add a SIM to this unit. I rather use the hotspot that I have on my phone um, to be able to perform these functions. So um, while it is, and, and I'll go ahead and show you a setting that I made, um, this will automatically shut off um, wireless on its own. So you're gonna see wireless is shut off here. So I'm gonna go through and enable my hotspot on my phone Sorry, I'm trying to do things with different hands. And my phone's slipping out of my hand. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and turn on my hotspot. So you're gonna see wireless is turned off. You gotta hold on to that. And you have to turn on Wi-Fi. I thought I turned this on already to not shut off on its own. Okay, so now it looks like it turns on on its own now. Um, so there is a bit of a delay there. You're gonna see boom. My, four, my iPhone 14 Pro comes up, it's connected. And now the only app that I've installed so far was Pandora. I just kind of did this on the fly one day um, just to be able to listen to music in the car without screwing with the way that my wife uh, had this set up. So, you know, you get your shit that pops up here from Pandora telling you, hey, they want you to pay for stuff. You get your ads. If you just want, you know, the album cover to come up, click on that. Album cover stays up for a little bit. That's how Pandora works. So I do, I do kind of like how this works with Pandora. Um, I may try out some other apps in the future, but this is all I've downloaded as of now. When you get this thing from AU Car, um, you're going to see a number of saved networks, which I think is kind of weird. I don't want to mess with these because I'm. 
Here's, here's why I don't want to mess with it. When you connect through wireless CarPlay, it basically creates an ad hoc network between your phone and this unit to be able to sync over a wireless network um, to be able to do that wireless cloning or screen mirroring. Um, I, if anything, I want to say it's this network. I got to double check on my wife's phone what network it uses. I think I can get rid of these two without causing problems but this one might be the one um, that the phone and, and and this unit use to sync up to each other. But obviously you're gonna question and say, oh wow, you know, is this secure? I got some random, random network trying to connect to my device. Um, I don't think that is an issue, but something to think about. Okay, so I actually just found something with these shortcut buttons down here. I just put the InTouch Up app here up here just in case we ever wanted to get to the radio but if you click this music button this music button actually defaults back to the uh in touch uh audio selection area so that's kind of cool but i'll probably remap that to something else you can do some mapping of the uh buttons in here somewhere under um settings and system you're gonna see some uh a whole bunch of other options here where you can adjust the steering wheel control some general stuff so i saw something in here for temperature display because i like having the temperature display up there but why not have it on here if you turn on the temperature display you just get your dashes right here um i don't know I don't know why it doesn't read the temperature from this unit because it should be reading it from the DCU, I would think. Um, but that is useless, so I shut that off. Um, there are a number of other things you can do here. Um, I have, and I actually set this, and it's actually pretty cool because we all know you can't you can't find what you're looking for if you if your music's too loud, right? Everybody turns down their music when they're looking for something. This actually has a reverse mute, so it'll mute the music or attenuate it. I have it actually attenuate it, i.e. turning it down when I go into reverse. That's kind of cool. I keep that feature on. Um, you have your dynamic guidelines. You don't want to mess with this. I think I turn this on and, and the lines just stay on the screen at all times, so you don't want to mess with that. Okay, so one other thing that I forgot that I was doing post-editing is one of the issues that I found with this unit that um, kind of made me realize about the whole DCU thing and this thing being an overlay or a piggyback over the DCU. I'm going to show you some screenshots below. Um, I, I thought I had more pictures of this, but I did not. Um, essentially, I was having some problems with, um, I think it was the navigation app. Uh, just kept on dying, just kept on force closing and everything was force closing. I think it was an issue with the DCU that was actually acting up. I think I did, I'm trying to remember what I did. I did some kind of factory reset on the DCU or I can't recall exactly what I did at that point, but that was able to re reset the issue and it has not come back since. Um, so again, if there are problems with your DCU, it is going to, that is on the underlay, and it, those problems are going to transpose in the overlay and show you weird shit happening on that screen and applications force closing. For some reason, the navigation app, and, and that's what I'm going to show you in the screenshots, needs access to your um, camera, needs access to your microphone, and with those things not working, it's going to force crash. Uh, I'm sorry I don't remember all the details as this was three or four weeks ago. My memory's terrible, um, but it's just another one of those things I wanted to drive in about the overlay versus underlay. So I think that is going to conclude the randomness of my video. I know I touched upon a lot of different things. These are things that I can think of off the top of my head that are just weird quirks and features. Um, again, I am going to have to pull out the radio at some point and put the um, USB connector in so I can be able to plug my phone in and tether it that way. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope this was useful for you guys and answers some questions. Um, as I play with it a little bit more and venture into some new things, I will make some update videos. But keep on doing what you guys are doing. Get involved in the videos. Ask me questions. This gives me ideas for new things to add for new videos. And I hope this fills in some blanks from some of Rob's videos as well. Um, so if you guys like it, you know, please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Get involved in the comments. Um, that helps the algorithm. That, that helps get the video out there more. And it helps 
give me some incentive to want to make more videos like this for you guys. So I appreciate you guys watching, um, and I will catch you on the next one. Have a good one, guys.